slowing down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh my god. Oh. No. This is the biggest vertical construction we've ever seen on the update, so I'd say pretty much. Lights. Camera. Action. Yo, what is going on guys? My name is Jack Silkstone. So, welcome to another Fort Park Fright Nights construction update. It's the second one of the year, and as always, today, I'm joined by your boy, Kieran Adams. Oh, How are you doing? I'm, I'm good, but I am very gassed. Of course, since the last construction update, we've had so much Fright Nights news. We've had an entire event announcement, which means today is gonna be a very, very action-packed update. We're gonna be showing you where all of these mazes, attractions are gonna be located. And from what we've heard and seen over the past few weeks, there's vertical. been some vertical yes. and exciting construction. I've literally just dropped off all of the SLK STM face masks to be shipped. So thank you all so much to everyone that copped one of those. They should be with you very soon. Um, but yeah, we're about to head into the park. It literally feels like forever since we did the last update, but like so much has happened. Oh, oh yes. I'm gassed, I'm gassed. Right. Let's see what we can see. Let's head into Let's the go. park. So if you've been keeping up with the Fright Nights videos on the channel, then you will know that we've had seven big announcements for this year's event. And I think the plan for today's update, Kieran, is to check them out one at a time, Where they are. head around the park, and we'll have a little chat about them, show you all of the construction that's going on at those sites. So I think first off, we're gonna head over towards the Swarm, Yes. where of course the Swarm Very Invasion exciting. has been announced. So let's head over there. If you guys aren't subscribed to the channel, then be sure to do so. We're trying to hit 20K subscribers by Christmas. So yeah, let's head round over to Swarm Island. So we've made our way over to Swarm Island where, as I mentioned, this year we've got a brand new addition to Fright Nights called the Swarm Invasion. And it's gonna be a little scare zone, isn't it? I mean, it? I think this is like eight years in the making. I'm so gassed, like everyone probably has wanted this. Like, oh yeah. At some point, some sort of swarm attraction. Ever yeah. since the swarm opened with an incredible marketing campaign, everyone just wanted more and more of the characters that they introduced. Characters such as Les Coogan and all of the conspiracy people. And presumably, we'll be seeing them returning because Fort Park put out a little teaser about Les Coogan. They said his name yeah. after eight years, so yeah. it's great to hear that again. And in the description for the scare zone, it does say about aliens that have taken over, yeah. so could we be seeing some costumes? Really oh, exciting. Really so. Presumably, we'll just be seeing kind of aliens, military people, it's, maybe it's some. Insane. That sounds awesome. Yeah, yeah. just sort of roaming around the area. We might get some new set pieces, in fact. The other day we presumably saw some of those set pieces, we're not 100% sure, but um, we'll be checking those out in a little bit. Um, so yeah, that's Swarm Island. Interestingly, over this little service road, there's actually some construction for other attractions. Yes, there's a couple of buses, some of the main, I think they were the ones from last year, so do or die and the anti high bus, they're just chilling over there. So, I think a police car. A police car? No, I think I've seen that as well. So we can presume those buses this year will be used for Amity High once again and also Lycan Fort High. Um, we'll be heading over to those areas and talking a little bit more about those shortly. Yeah, it would be sick if they still have it to see the enders coming. Like, you know how they still have the stealth? They had like that. Oh, bit. yes. Bring that back. Oh, yes. But yeah, really, really excited for the swarm. I think it very well could be one of the best experiences at this year's Fright Nights. I think it largely is going to depend on the costumes. Yeah. If the costumes for this scare zone are scary, I think it could be incredible. Yeah, we have some nice party and some smoke. Oh, yeah. It really is very Halloween Horror Nights, I think, and if it's pulled off well, I'm gassed because the swarm is just a sick view. So, yeah. 
very, very exciting that we've got a swarm attraction at this year's Friday Nights. Right, let's head to our next one. So here we are now in the Stealth Plaza where we have now had it confirmed that Terra at Amity High High School Sucks will be returning for this year. That's a good thing, isn't it? Brilliant news. Um, we always were hoping for it. I'm so gassed. I mean, the dry floor theory. Might... Yeah, the dry floor. <laughs> uh, who even knows, but I'm so gassed. Are we going to be the same dance? Or, um... I think. Fingers crossed we could be in for a new dance this year, that would be cool. Well, there was anything wrong with the last one. Oh no, it's fantastic, but, but it's... Little, it'd be nice to have yeah. a fashion up, new music, new dance, hopefully a stage. Can I have your attention in the stealth queue line answer on the air, just to make you aware. You should definitely subscribe to the Jack Silk Stone. Thank you for your cooperation, hope you enjoyed the rest of your day here at Thorpe Park Resort. Luke needs to pipe down there, really, doesn't he? <laughs> <laughs> he does he not really, he's interrupted. <laughs> but interestingly, this year, Amity High has got a rival school, Lycanfort oh, High, yeah. which we're going to Hopefully. be talking about in a little bit once we head over to its location. I think there's a fast track sign over there. <laughs> you know, madness happens. But we could be seeing a little school rivalry. Like, we're going to have to pick which Wait school. Us. He's giving us away. In the op booth. But yeah, we could be seeing a little rivalry between the schools this year. We've set up a perfect narrative for the future. Oh, yeah. Very, very cool. As for this area, we haven't seen any construction taking place here yet. I remember last year it was one of the last areas to be constructed for Bright Nights, so presumably we'll be seeing the same again once the bus is dragged in over there. Maybe. Could be put here this year, we never know. Would be nice. Never know. Would be nice. Although I think these, um, yeah, you need yeah. access to these, right. so. It's not as wide here as well. So I, I presume we'll be seeing the bus there, we'll be seeing lighting in the whole area. Hopefully it steps up again, because the year before it, like, it advanced and then you know, we yeah. had like, 360 lighting, all sorts. Oh, yes. That's Very that. excited for Amity High. Right, next up, we're going to head round into the dockyard area where Oktoberfest is currently taking place. Um, and we're going to check some very exciting construction that's been going on there. Oh yeah! Let's go! So we've now arrived here in the Oktoberfest hub. Really, really like an Oktoberfest so far. And, of course, once Fright Nights runs around, this whole area is going to be transformed into the Festival. Oh yeah, it's the Festival Arena. Festival yeah. Arena, yeah. It's so, so weird because obviously before Ghost Train was built, this area was the arena and it hosted mazes like My Bloody Valentine. Yeah. Legendary mazes and now... And now it's the returning arena. to the arena. Uh, um, so it's still looking great around here and... Imagine this, just with everything saying Fright Nights instead of Oktoberfest. So yeah, I presume yeah. with Oktoberfest finishing on October 4th, They'll have a few days to turn around this whole area Fred into Fred. a Fright Night zone. Um, all of the bunting, I presume, will come down and hopefully be swapped out for some nice Fright Nights one. But once Fright Nights does come, I presume we'll be having some entertainment on the stage. Yeah, which is sick. Oh, that's going to be awesome. I'll have a show potentially. Like yeah. Uh, I'm assuming the benches will come out, so this area will be a lot more open, maybe, for the actors. And who knows, like, will the food things stay? Like, I don't know. I don't know. It's really hard to tell. Um, and I think this could literally be the last area to be set up because of Oktoberfest. It's either the day before, surely. Yeah. So, yeah. But of course, with a lot of the speculation for the Festival Arena, we said it's going to be similar to Big Top. I'm now kind of moving away from that. I don't think it's going to be so much focused around clowns and stuff. Uh, I think it's more like it's freaks. It's not clowns. Yeah. It's just like probably like weird things. More just like, circle kind of carnival people, yeah, not necessarily like, clowns. Like the weird body people. Like, I don't know what it's called, but that. But either way, yeah. I am excited. And also, I want to see this stage at night time with like some smoke. Oh, yeah. There's so many lights on there. Like, that's it's got a lot of potential and interestingly I believe a lot of the lighting used on this stage is actually from the iconic ride X which of course closed for the Walking Dead and um, the ride but yeah very cool and interestingly just an Oktoberfest little update they've taken down the uh, ghost train sign if you actually look at the restrictions board it's fully gone it's completely it's gone <laughs> So I don't know, maybe they'll change that for Friday nights as well. We could have a Festival Arena one up there instead. 
That would be cool. Maybe we'll still see the ball here at Fine Lines, who knows? Yeah. Either way. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. Right, next up, we're going to go and head to the little service area where we always see something interesting for Fine Lines. Don't and we? we've got something interesting. Yeah, look, we believe there's something very cool in there, yeah. so we're going to head over there now. So the van is slightly obstructing it today, but as you can see from this clearer photo on screen now, they've kind of got these green like, dividers. I think they look like military kind of style yeah. roadblock kind of things. Uh, I mean, they've been painted green and they've they, got we, like yeah, black, saw them, they black um, plastic almost on them with barbed wire wrapped around yeah, them. Yeah, they're not real barbed wire. No. We were thinking swarm, but surely 100% military theme. Military, they'll just have it around the island, like dotted around, yeah, practice like to hide space. behind and stuff. But However, we just spotted something very, very interesting. Which is some, some barbed wire on top of a fence in the old, where it was that, pre show area? Yeah. So, and that looks like it's fixed up there, so that means that there's barbed wire in that maze, which means this is probably for that, but. I don't know. Because interestingly, we've got a brand new maze in this area this year. It's called Route of Evil. It's going to be a £10 up charge um, every time you want to do it. And presumably the queue will be here just like with Blair Witch. Um, but it seems like you could be straight into the maze on the other side of that wooden gate. Oh my goodness. Hello. Look at this. Oh, we're having a look. <laughs> <laughs> how are you doing? Good, how are you? Very well, very well. <laughs> Gave me a fright. Oh, of course, yeah, of course. You're getting ready for fright night. Oh, yes. What have you discovered so far? Oh, we've seen a bit of barbed wire over there. Just wondering what it's for. Oh. Security. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, they gave me a fright there. It feels like Fright Nights has come early. Um, what were you Maybe saying? Get some Roman barbarians. <laughs> uh, what were you so saying? Basically, I had a thought. I never thought about all the space that actually had because I was thinking, oh, I'll probably Blair Witch. But really, there's a lot of room back there. There is a big old space. This, this is all. There's room here. Yeah. So like, could we be seeing this, that, and the old Blair Witch run? Because of course last year, in this area behind Army Celebrity, we had the queue for Blair Witch. It always had a big queue. Yeah, um, and it went into that area. And the year before that, we had um, Dead Creek Woods in this area. So they're definitely willing to use these areas for maze space. So we could be seeing um, Roots of Evil having quite a big layout. It's the maze starts and you go through this fence, and it would be a very big footprint. Yeah. And uh, interestingly, if you head down the Nemesis Inferno exit, they have actually been doing work on the presumably finale of the Roots of Evil. They put a whole canopy yeah. over the area. So we had a thought that maybe that's the start of the maze now. Like, it was a rough fall, but maybe... But... You never know, but yeah. it's definitely one to watch. And we're going to do Monk's Walk in a little bit, so we can hopefully see some really interesting construction from Roots of Evil and Platform 15. So over here in Old Town, we've now had it confirmed that two Bright Nights attractions are going to be taking place here for 2020 Bright Nights. It is, of course, Platform 15 and Creek Freaks Unchained. First of all, Platform 15 is going to be very different, very different very this different. year. I didn't even realise this until recently, but... If you read the description of the maze, it states that the entrance for Platform 15 is now going to be located next to Samurai. Very So weird. that's a bit mad. I mean, it, it, there's a lot of things. Like this, the maze technically is now mirrored. Which, yes, which you've been saying for a long time would be cool. It'd be cool this year to have Platform mirrored. And it seems like that could be the case. That's really cool. The tunnel. I don't know what that's saying with like COVID, but... So presumably now, we're going to be exiting platform somewhere in this area, which is of course where you used to enter the maze. And it's also where we saw the new theme yeah. that we bought was for the queue line. So we were, we were obviously wrong there. That could be a finale scene now. But we're definitely going to head down Monk's Walk, as I said, and we're going to properly discuss 
um, what the maze is going to look like this year because yeah. we've got some good ideas. And hopefully, we're going to see some construction down there. Because Absolutely, it's, yeah. it's a mile walk. Yeah, <laughs> so. Um, but yeah, with the tunnel. Who knows? Who knows? If you do ride saw, and if you uh, if you look down for a split second, you can actually see right down into the village. And yeah. we went there the other day, and I'll tell you what, it's it? just it it's demolished. Great. It's it demolished. It's literally like a building site. It's pretty much a, a clear line of sight down to the house now. So to oh. me, that's really exciting. It seems like they're putting a lot of effort into making the village section of platform. Um, they're they're bringing it back to life. It yeah, <laughs> it's such a strange thing, but yeah, platform's going to be running backwards. It's a new maze. That I've Very been. exciting. We're going to discuss it further when we do Monk's Walk. But the other attraction taking place in Old Town, as I said, is going to be Creek Freak Unchained. It's of course the continuation of the incredible Creek Freak Massacre, which unfortunately isn't going to be opening for this year's Fright Nights. But it's going to be a scare zone, and what was that? Go on, new addition this year. Oh yes. Oh yes, <laughs> we've got a bell on the exit ramp, so that's quite cool. I can see them all kind of gathering yeah. in one area, and then maybe I the. Mean, this is like a semi kind of like a stage. Yeah, maybe the leader buckwheat will ring the bell, and they'll all just sprint off with their chains. Yeah. I think it's like the perfect area for us, yeah. So we were saying this the other day. Yeah. Interestingly, a lot of the benches have been moved from the area. Like there used to be a bench here where you'd often find Miles Keenan. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a very open area now. And I genuinely think Creek Freak on Chain could be a highlight of this year's Friday nights. Imagine just chainsaws running around Old Town. Well, last year, the Creek sort of team that were entertaining yeah. us by the maze was one of the best things at the event. Yeah. So I'm gassed with chainsaws. Whether if they'll be just contained to this area of Old Town, but technically, Old Town goes right down into the saw the ride area, so. But even so, this big circle with chainsaws, yeah. smoke, lights, if they're playing the soundtrack. Oh, it'll be so cool. So yeah, really excited for Creek Creek Unchained. We're just gonna head around the corner now to see if we can see anything of Platform 15 from what will now be the entrance to the maze. So we're now over in Lost City at the site of Lycanfort Pie, the brand new school at this year's Fright Nights, which is of course going to be rivaling Amity High. This school is going to be themed around werewolves, which means we're going to be having some werewolves oh, like yeah. roaming this area. Wait, I've never had werewolves at the event. It's, it's pretty cool. It's a cool theme and I really, really love how they've set up this kind of opposition between the two schools and also it's a clever wordplay like steven's big up he did some research <laughs> like lichen four or something is a werewolf so yeah like the fork, but, like, very clever very yeah, clever big up, big up. um interestingly we actually have seen a bit of construction in this area or well, not construction but preparations deconstruction, well. deconstruction because normally there's loads of benches here where you can you know have a bit of food enjoy your enjoy your time at the resort but all of these benches have been removed and you can see loads of tire tracks actually um so it's there is also something else that we've seen, which confirms a lot of things, I think. Oh yes, if we head over here, you can see the bright red markings. Very we've got bright. one here, we've got one here. They're very bright, they've been put down recently. And just down here, we've got another two. One there, and one there. So that, of course, makes the shape of a rectangle. And I personally well, believe <laughs> this is where the bus for this school is gonna go. Could be completely wrong, but to me, if Amity High had a bus last year, you'd presume that Lycanthorpe is also gonna have a bus. And those red markings map out oh, a perfect rectangle. Um, as well as that, which also kind of strengthens our argument for this, we've got another red marking which just over here. It's in the sort of shape of a, like a lighting tower. It could be anything, It's in the shape of, course, of a square. To me, it looks like that's going to be a lighting tower, a nice which is going to be up in the air and it's going to, you know, have like yeah, lighting and maybe. stuff on this whole area. Maybe they're going to have some like fireworks on the lake behind the bus. Oh, imagine that. That would be cool, pushing the budget <laughs> out. So yeah, I rate that and I, you, you're really excited for liking Ball. Very, very. Yeah, it's one of my most anticipated ones for this year. 
think Amiel is just so cool. It's yeah. nice to see it over here. I can't imagine a scare zone here, so it's going to be really cool. And hopefully we'll be seeing a dance for this show oh, as well. So that would be really cool if the dance kind of took place in front of the bus. Yeah, very cool. It's, a, it's, been fair. it's a massive space. Absolutely. I can imagine the bus there right now. Yeah, I'm gassed, I'm gassed. So whilst like and Forth is Kieran's most anticipated thing for this year, the next thing we're going to discuss is my most anticipated thing and we're going to head just over to the exit of the dome to discuss it. So the final new addition for this year's Pride Nights event and of course the one that I am most anticipated for I think is the Crows which is not actually set to a specific location at the park. They're going to be a roaming team it sounds like. And boy, oh boy, am I excited. Because if they get the costumes right, I genuinely think it could be terrifying. I think if there's a mask on the costume, like an actual like, headpiece, yeah. I will not be going there. <laughs> oh, no, that's scary. But I'm very gassed for it. It sounds like one of the creepiest things out front. Yeah. So. And the fact they're roaming means you're not safe at any point. Well, it sounds like they're roaming. The description says they're going to be at mystery locations. So it seems like they are just going to pick and choose where they want to go. But they but, might have sets. They might have like yeah. set bits and set locations or something. But me and Kieran actually had, a, a, in my opinion, a really cool idea. Um, as you can see, we're just outside the beach, which if you've been to Fort Park, you'll know it's one of the first locations that you see when you enter the park through the dome up there. And of course, in previous years, we've had some cool things on the beach during oh, Fright Nights. There is something on the beach, the atmosphere is incredible. Yeah, we've had things like the Curse, which is down here. Seven. Seven. Big we've had top. the Big Top, which took a place across the it's both the areas. The most stunning visually maze I've ever oh, seen. Oh, it's so cool. And it makes us some great photos, which in turn makes great marketing for yeah, the park. Nice. And me and Kieran Paul, with the Crows being kind of the roamers this year, imagine if they set up a load of mannequins on the beach that were dressed in the same costume. Yeah. Like, as the crows, as, yeah, crows like up on things, hay bales. and then every now and again whenever the crows were in this area they just kind of blend in with them and stand still for a little bit and then they can just like move and, and creep just, people out you wouldn't be able to go in there but you see it everywhere you go it's, it would be like a show in if they had like lighting around the edge some um, like trusses pointing down smoke across the whole area and then just these scarecrows like emerging from the smoke like, spotlight the scarecrows when they move like they could do it obviously we are talking like yeah. <laughs> not doable but it would just be cool to see this area used again and of course it will be such a cool visual point as you come out the dome at fright nights you're gassed and you just see loads of like scarecrows standing even, still literally even if it was just there was no actors involved it was just scarecrows yeah on the way in normally on the right there's normally like uh some zombies and stuff but it's not super appreciated out there as much as it would be here yeah so it would be nice to see this space and the, the amount of people that walk over this bridge that would take pictures it would just be cool and it would add to the overall park atmosphere so also, of the day at 3 p.m. All the actors could be here and they could oh, all be like called be out so one by cool. one, run off to their mazes. A proper little, oh, yeah. Honestly. Get a creative team, get in touch with me and Kieran. Oh, It'll be cool, but yeah, that's none of that what we've just said is happening, but it's just my, mine and Kieran's little idea, yeah, so that would be very way cool. Too many ideas. We have too many Fright Nights ideas that we'd love to oh, on, love to suggest. Oh no, <laughs> oh no. Sorry about that, guys. I thought we just saw one of the Fright Nights actors early. Uh, just joking, Adam. Great seeing him again. Um, but yeah. I think we're just about done in the park itself now. Well so we're gonna head out into the car park and then we're gonna head to Monk's Walk because we still got plenty of other things to show you and to discuss with you guys. In fact, I think the video is just pretty much starting, isn't yeah, it? This is the bit I'm most gassed. Yeah, we're gonna go see Platform 15 and Roots of Evil construction. The two brand new mazes for this year. I'm super excited, so I let's think we're go. Gonna see some stuff. I think oh we're yes. Gonna see something. So here we are now going down Monk's Walk, the public footpath next to the Fort Park Resort. Of course, another addition to this year's kind of Fright Nights offering is the Lunar Cinema, which um, we can presume is going to take place in one of Fort Park's car parks. And they're offering like a scary driving. Very, very interesting. Like, I mean, I would never have expected it, and it wasn't, it was like just announced randomly, but mm, I'm gassed. Like, yeah. It what? seems like they're doing showings like after Fright Nights as well, yeah. like into like half nine. So you can go to Fright Nights, then um, go and watch a scary film. And not, they're not even all scary films, like there is some other films. Uh, I think it'll be a laugh for the boys to be honest. Quite a cool little yeah. offering. 
Right, so we've now entered a monk's walk as I said and just over this fence is a platform 15 which is of course a very very key thing. Am I, is the carriage gone? Nah. Is it not? Oh at the front? Yeah. Yeah, I think so mate. It's gone. There's oh no, my it's god. Actually, it's gone. Oh my oh, god. Man. It's gone. Oh, wait, no, it's, not, is it? it's lying down. <laughs> Down on the floor. Oh my god. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's drunk. Big construction it's, there. That's mad. Bro, Stephen's off. Honestly, a bit. every time we've ever done a Monk's Walk, nothing has ever changed in oh, this area. This <laughs> the train's had a burden and it's fallen over. Oh, mad. Too many, I was too not many spatons, expecting mate. One, that. One spat and too many. He's enjoyed Oktoberfest. Wow, me. that's a bit crazy. Um, big, is it? I was not expecting that. Of Same. course, normally on platform you do the this long old walk with an actor who would tell you the storyline of platform, and then you'd get into this main sight line where you'd see the fire coming out of the train, and that's where the actual maze would begin. But of course, this year with platform being mirrored and you're going to be sent around backwards of course this is kind of like the last big scene yeah. that they have before a very long walk which might even have some theming down but it also it did make it does make more sense i think to see this towards the mid slash end of the maze with the storyline yeah. i always thought it does make sense for it to be at the end so of uh, course now they can use the tunnel as a, the pre-show kind of telling you the story that's going on well i'm just gonna be honest so we walked down here today i, I wasn't expecting <laughs> this man. I was not expecting that's so funny. Right, have they just done that so it's now like a new wall that you've got to go around? I actually like, don't know. Uh, yeah. Are they doing maintenance on that? Or is that going to... Surely just... that would... Surely that's, that's, so, surely that's so heavy. Like, that must have taken a lot. <laughs> the wind's just blown over. But I honestly was not expecting to see that at all. I can't even think The Sleeper they, Express has fallen over. Unless they're doing some fixing on it. Are they moving it? Are they... God knows. That's big. That is, that really is huge. Big. Oh my goodness. I'm pretty sure there's a black curtain up down the whole train now. Uh, I think that was, that was there before, oh, yeah. Um, but we can't see anything else um, down the rest of the platform. But that is uh, that's a bit crazy. So I have to say, I really was not expecting to see that. That's so I funny. I genuinely think that's one of the biggest things we've <laughs> ever seen down here before. Whether if they've literally just done that and they're just kind of starting the moving or construction process on that or maintenance there, or it might have been like that for a while. Um, but yeah, we're now walking down this main pathway, so we could be seeing other stuff. Um, as we go, but yeah, obviously you're gonna start platform now where you would end down that long tunnel And I presume they've done that for social distancing. Of course once you're in the maze Groups don't always go at the same pace some go fast some go slow So it's good. It would have been a nightmare to social distance within that tunnel So I presume that's the reason they've kind of flipped platform this year They can now control guest flow through that tunnel a lot easier but Also if they are gonna start charging for it they have now made it a fresh new maze. Yeah, they've completely so, changed like, it, so fair enough. Fun. You're gonna now go through the whole village section backwards, and as I said earlier, it seems like they are changing the whole village section. And then you've got this as your finale now. So I'm kind of wondering how they're gonna make this this interesting, yeah, to be honest. These flaps are gonna have to go. Yeah, uh, of course, with, flaps. Well, it's not very hygienic, but COVID is gonna be, make yeah, them go. At this point, you're gonna be- You're gonna be- your finale. Running you? or walking oh, down this entire down? finale. It would be super cool if they saw I did something down at the train and got you all the way down. So I think it's a really, really unique and cool opportunity and it's going to take a, a good idea to pull it off. But I, I put a lot of trust into the Fork team and I hope they can construct some kind of cool ending that involves this very long walk. Because um, there's no, there's been no construction going on down this long bit and there's nothing new in there. It's still just a long pathway. Um, but of course you might see something just here where the old queue line and entrance would have been. <laughs> so 
so we're really quite confused looking at this kind of now exit to platform 15 because of course in the last construction update we saw they put in this kind of brand new scene as well as this brand new um what we thought was a queue line fence down there but now Bro, I'm knowing that the maze has been mirrored I've... this it's got to be a queue line it just line. looks like a queue line doesn't it and they put a new ramp in they put a new fence in it, it was all adding up to the fact that they've just freshened up the queue line a bit but now it seems like you're going to be exiting up that ramp and then are you carrying on down this new area or i'm very confused really confused be sure to subscribe guys because it's definitely a big mystery at the moment and as will, to what's going on with platform 15. it will become apparent within the next it will few weeks, yeah 100 like we just need a little bit more like to go off of and then yeah. we'll be able to predict it but right now it's really hard to tell where you're going to be exiting platform what the finale of the maze is going to be as well as where you're going to be going in and queuing but as I said, we'll soon find out. I'm sure in the next construction update that we do, we'll have answers for you guys. I feel like the Creek Freak queue could also be utilised. Yeah, very true. Of, I don't know. Right, that's everything to cover with platform though. Next up, we've got the brand new maze for 2020, Roots of Evil to take a look at. So once again, don't know a lot going into this area, so we could see another train on his side. Oh. Oh. So we were just going along kind of saying that it doesn't seem like a lot's going on to be honest like a lot of the Blair Witch symbols are still up and then we spotted Okay, <laughs> this is looking good Look at that I'm not sure what's going on <laughs> but that looks cool We've got like a watchtower that's been built that's Wow cool. It's like uh, the balcony in Creek Yeah so that is completely new. We've never seen anything like that down here before. It's big. Like, and there's a light on it. There's a light like pointing away from it. This could be the first socially distant scare we've seen. Yeah. Like, this could be because of distancing. They, they're going to be up there further away from you potentially. Like this is the first we've seen of anything like this since COVID. So construction has really picked up towards the end of Roots of Evil, or at least what we presume is going to be the end, you never know, it could be the start. Yeah. But to me it looks like the finale. It's got to the point where I'm almost it's going to issue a spoiler warning. Because this is a paid maze now, you might not want the finale uh, of the maze ruined, yeah. but we've seen some really interesting stuff. Obviously we've got this new watchtower thing. I mean it's very minor, but the fact that the light is pointing that way suggests obviously you're coming this way through the maze. So oh very true, yeah. yeah. Very end. true. Uh, so presumably there's gonna be an actor up there that's kind of looking over what is the area in Blair Witch just before you went into the cruel tunnel, yeah. which is located just over in that section, literally where the watchtower is. Um, and then from there you do go into what was the kind of duck cruel tunnel in Blair Witch. Oh, you just kind of went down um, and it was a little bit claustrophobic and then, that's all and then when you come out of that towards... you're literally in a netted area and to me it seems like they've taken what was the best part of Blair Witch the finale shed where it was all dark and smoky and they've just kind of extended it um, into two more sections obviously this section before you go into what was the Blair Witch house which is now under this netting all canopy enclosed yeah it's all sort so of enclosed it's... and even in the daytime it's probably quite dark under there yeah so you're then going from the cruel tunnel you're still in the dark at this point whereas previously you were out in and the also, open again i don't think you'll know you're then going into no the building. it won't this so much seem like, like it one inside section and hopefully it'll be really smoky and it it could because the cruel tunnel you could be like going underground yeah it could be oh there. i like, like that yeah you're going into the finale where yeah, the, the creature is yeah yeah and they're, they're, they're someone that's someone warning you don't oh, go yeah, in yeah that's like, good that's oh, good yes. um and then yeah you've got the shed where they've made a little modification down here they've added in um an actor access area so actors will be able to get in there really easily um in and out what was that this shed's never going anywhere <laughs> it's always gonna be here they'll be do there. as many mods as they literally, can literally the first year this ever opened it was literally just one wasn't it and then i think they extended it's it like to be a long one, thing yeah, a bigger shed. and then they added this um this facade and to and it added the, the, the little shed being cube at the end and now they've added like a tent yeah, honestly this 
this, this shed has gone through a lot during Fright Nights. Um, and then one other thing to mention is the fact that there's actually a body down there. There's like a mannequin thing. So, don't know where that's going to be, but it's a bit creepy. Again, it's another COVID kind of scare thing. Like, they yeah. might be using a few mannequins this year and just, yeah. I, I mean, personally find mannequins really scary, so it's, it's cool to see that. It's extreme do really yeah, well. Just, really it's, it's almost like a distraction scare because you're so focused on seeing if it's a real person Especially or not. Especially the dog. That then another actor can get you and, and proper scare you. But yeah, loads and loads of construction going on here at Roots of Evil. I'm, this has got me quite gassed for this maze, to be honest. This is the biggest vertical construction we've ever seen on the updates, I'd say, pretty much. So, that's big, and you know, folks just love their watchtowers. Oh yes, to me it seems like they're kind of theming Roots of Evil from the end onwards. So, although it's not a lot, although not a lot has changed in the midsection of the maze, they're definitely doing it at the end and who knows with the pre-show we can't really see it from Monk's Walk but with the barbed wire that we saw earlier it seems like they're they're prepping and up why, for something why cool. Why is there barbed wire? Why? Like it's, it's cool, yeah. it's sounding cool, I'm gassed. And I definitely think your little theory of how you go um, underground for the finale kind of works well. well. There is a creature or and something. And they're like warning you not to go down there. I so think yeah. as the maze goes on, it's just going to get more and more intense. Just quite like Blair Witch did, where yeah. like they're, they're getting more and more possessed. Because yeah, in these mid sections, we haven't seen much change. I think they've added like some some trees and foliage here, but nothing too um, serious to mention yet. Yet, yes. Be sure to subscribe for the upcoming construction updates. But yeah, a lot has been discovered today down Monk's Walk. So I'm very glad we did it. Fire Nights is happening. Like, oh yes. Oh happening. yes. Mates are going up. And oh, of course gosh. we're what three or three weeks away now. Three I weeks. Think. Yeah. So the updates are going to be coming thick and fast as construction really picks up its pace. And yeah, we're actually going back now to film an episode of a launch, which is going to be all about Fright Nights. We're going to be discussing it in depth. So I'm that should be a good one. I'm gassed oh, yes. Fright Nights off of today. Be sure to subscribe because honestly, Fright Nights is a massive time of year for this channel and I'm super, and super it's a Fright excited. Night's like this year. This for is going to be a very interesting one. Yeah, absolutely. So that brings us to the end of yet another Fort Park Fright Nights 2020 construction update. It's been a good one, hasn't it, Kieran? I had a great time, honestly. We weren't Seen expecting so to see half of what we saw. Honestly, we were just kind of going to show you guys where all of the announced mazes were going to be located at the park. And then we did Monk's Walk, and boy, oh boy, did this turn into an yeah. interesting update. I want to go back already. I want to. I want to see what's happening to that train. <laughs> the drunk train. <laughs> oh boy. So yeah, it is definitely an interesting one. And as I said, the updates are going to be coming thick and fast from here on out. But yeah, thank you very much for joining us today, Kieran. His links are, as always, down in the description. Thanks. So go and check him out. And yeah, otherwise, thank you all very much for watching this video. If you guys could comment down below what you are most excited for at this year's Fright Nights, that would be fantastic. I'll be reading through them and replying to you guys. And as always, if you have enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a thumbs up. It really helps out my channel and it shows me that you guys are loving these construction updates. And yeah, otherwise, thank you all very much for watching. My name is Jack Silkstone. Goodbye. Ripped out now I'm vibing Link with the boys jump straight to the island Silkstone flex on a wave like tidal Style so crazy I hit it in a silence <laughs>